Come on now. Yeah, 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 whatever. Come on, keep bring all those dad comments. I want them all. That's right, y'all better flee. You better go. You better. Henny gonna get destroyed. Henny gonna get destroyed. Destroyed. Guaranteed. Henny gonna get destroyed. He gonna get destroyed. Guaranteed. It's bulk season, son. Ryan Garcia says don't trip, he'll make weight. He'll be ready for Devin Haney April 20th. Ryan Garcia gives a sneak peek to his current form weeks before his fight. See what's goody in this new episode of Ego Weight Watchers only on Boxing Ego Official YouTube channel. Let's dive in. Haney gonna get destroyed. Destroyed, says Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, he had me worried for a minute, seemingly extremely distracted, talking about everything but the fight. But as we near 420, shout out to all the smokers, as we get near that date, Ryan Garcia, he appears to be a lot more focused and tapped in. Not all the way, you know, focused like I'd like to see, but we'll say better. Ryan Garcia, in this video, we will talk about his current form. He posted some new pictures. Welcome to Ego Weight Watchers, AKA Ill, where I give you guys a look into the fighter lifestyle, before, after, and progress picks, especially when they have an upcoming fight. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Ryan Garcia has never been a champion. Devin Haney is a champion. Boxing is a sport where you got to respect it. You know, we've seen Roley, who was a champion, and the challenger came in, and that was Esau Pitbull Cruz. I have a full breakdown and detailed video of that particular fight. You guys need to check that on the channel. Great performance by Pitbull Cruz as challenger. Now, similarly, you have Ryan Garcia, Mexican-American, and he's stepping in as a challenger, fighting a new champion in this division. They're both new to the 140-pound weight class, and Ryan Garcia, he's definitely looking in shape. Ryan Garcia, for me personally, he had me worried for a minute. Reason being, let's just say Ryan was posting a lot of extracurricular things, things that, from my stance have very little to nothing to do with boxing and i wasn't sure if he was fully focused as we get closer to that day of april 20th stay tuned to the end of the video i will show you the updated pictures that ryan garcia posted and devin haney has responded to that so all of that will be covered by this video's end so ryan garcia he did have me worried but now it looks like as we get closer he's taking his his training camp a bit more serious he's still on social media he's still you know with dean the great doing live streams he's still some of the posts are bizarre but it's toned down just a little bit which is what me personally me an old an old soul a boomer whatever you want to call me i prefer it because that's what i'm used to seeing big fights big moments fighters at least looking like life is is about the optics a lot of times and i remember being it this is a true story I remember being in elementary school and my teacher, this is the first account that I can remember of hearing the, the phrase perception is reality. The, cause I was kind of a class clown, you know, talking and my teacher made that comment based on whatever happened at that, that moment in elementary school. And she said, well, ego perception is reality. And my brain's still developing. I'm a child. I didn't quite understand what that meant. It's not that I didn't understand the words, but I didn't understand. Like in my brain, I was like, how is perception reality? Reality is reality. And pretty much F how someone perceives it. It should be the truth is the truth, no matter what. And it, who cares if someone's perceiving it wrong? That's how I was thinking. But as I've grown older, I truly understand what that 
statement really means and really embodies in terms of perception is reality because at the end of the day especially social media i think in the modern times that we're in with social media perception does become the reality even if it's not true meaning you can see a couple and they're posting their honeymoon or engagement or their relationship they're going to restaurants they're celebrating valentine's day they're buying each other gifts and you see this oftentimes with celebrities too a month two months later you hear these celebrities or the people and they broke up or they're filing for a divorce but on social media the perception was you were in the best relationship ever you enjoyed each other's company etc cetera, etc cetera. so as it pertains to ryan garcia ryan had me worried because you know i'm not with him 24 7. i'm not with him at all in general but i'm not with him to see what's going on and all we can see is you're spending a lot of time on social media so i'm actually happy to report in this ego weight watchers ryan is looking in shape so ryan garcia posted this picture and you can see you know he looks he looks like he's going to bring a good fight or at least i mean just from they say a picture says a thousand words he looks a lot more trim like he's putting in the work which is what i personally love to see because you have to understand i am a channel but i love boxing i wouldn't have started a channel and made it this far if i didn't love the sport of boxing so that being said i am still a fan at heart and still a consumer like when it comes to this boxing game when i do watch parties i purchase the fight because it takes money to make money so i'm not gonna do something go out of the i want to support the fighters support the event i'm making money off of it you guys send cash apps links in the descriptions you send super chats things like that so that's how it goes right so i always support my sport of boxing and as a consumer since i am a paying patron of the sport of boxing you can never tell what's going to happen in a fight like i couldn't i knew fundora tim zoo would be a good fight i didn't expect it to be that bloody that was a gory fight because how would i know that this six foot six slender man his sharp elbows would like rub against the top of tim zoo's head and he would look like a jack-o-lantern a pumpkin or something and turn into pumpkin head and have like blood trickling in his eye there was no way for me to really predict that all i know is it was a tough fight on paper especially late the late switch since keith thurman was out and at the end of the day that's what we got but no one really predicted that it was going to be both fighters at the end of 12 rounds would be super bloody a lot of people picked a knockout to occur no one got knocked out no one got knocked down so boxing is like that so for me i want to see at least it look like because i'm going to be spending my money on these events i wanted to at least have the appearance again what i said earlier perception is reality i prefer to see that the fighters are at least taking it seriously that's my whole beef i've said that with ryan garcia from the beginning i want to see that like hey you're really taking it because i'm going to have to spend my money on it and who wants to spend money on the pay-per-view who wants to buy a ticket to an event and it looks like one of the guys is like playing around or half-hearted devin haney is no joke he's a great champion he's a great fighter a lot of people have him as a heavy favorite you know what i'm saying so i i need to see some work i want to see a good fight a good event and i want to see I don't care who loses in a fight i don't have a horse in the race for any fight really but i want to see at least the person have a good account for themselves like tim zoo he's the ultimate um example that i can give of a true warrior a true pugilist he took a late last minute switch fought his heart out fought with adversity never complained didn't make excuses when he lost and says i'll come again i'll be back i can support and continue to support a fighter like that because it's not just the fact that you lost it's how you lost if a person loses but it's like some victor ortiz stuff where you quit or you start headbutting floyd you know it's gonna of course make the the loss worse for the fighter but if you go out there on your shield 
and you lose, preferably not by knockout, but you know, even by knockout, at least like Wilder versus Fury 3. Wilder's a G. At least he went out on his own terms. So I don't have no problem with that in general. So I just want to see that the fighters are taking it serious. Back to Ego Weight Watchers. King Ryan says, I'm on weight. Don't trip. I'm ready for all that smoke. 420, Brooklyn. Let's get it. And then he tagged his own boxing. This is what I like to see. All that QAnon and um, time travel and these like Andrew Tate slash Trump slash Kanye West type of rants that Ryan is going going you know on about that have nothing to do with boxing that's not really my thing right I want to see the fight I want to see a good fight now Ryan again he does look in in good shape I would also go on record as saying and this might be just because of the age he's at now this is the heaviest that I could recall Ryan Garcia like if you look at some of his old pictures he didn't look that big now it looks like he's maturing as a um, you know mid 20s male and he's having an easier time keeping the weight on and i can understand that because you know when i was 18 19 the weight i just eat whatever taco bell subway and i couldn't gain no weight but you know as a man you get older and that, that weight is different to build weight and stuff like that but this looks to me at least you guys let me know if you think something different but for me this looked like the biggest that I could recall seeing Ryan Garcia, truthfully, truthfully. This looked like the biggest, you know, the heaviest that he's been. So both Ryan and Devin Haney have some size to them. I am really curious if a person misses weight here or has to weigh in naked, like pause, no diddy. Pause. We're going to pause that. But I'm really curious if someone has to weigh in with the you know the towel covering them because this new generation let me tell you far removed are we from the days of floyd mayweather and manny pacquiao where the fighter walks around at said weight which is extremely close to their fighting weight ryan garcia if you if you know anything about weight you can kind of guesstimate with knowing a person's height and their previous weights and how they've previously looked because ryan's been a celebrity for a while so he's been in the public eye you, you see what i'm saying so at the end of the day i can kind of guesstimate and this again looks like the heaviest that ryan's been now another thing that is intriguing about this fight is i don't know what other people think but i'll give you guys my synopsis of the fight no one really expects for ryan garcia to outbox Devin Haney for 12 rounds. So the interesting thing about a fight like this is we seen Devin Haney fight against Jorge Linares and he was dominating that fight. Out of nowhere, Linares clipped him and got his attention and rocked him. So I think that's the fun with a fight like this is no matter how good Devin Haney is boxing, will there be a moment where Ryan Garcia sends something up the middle, has that whipping left hook and catches you. And we've seen Devin Haney hurt by Lomachenko. So if Lomachenko can hurt you, and I'm talking about decently badly hurt by Lomachenko, credit to Devin, he he bit down, he did what champions are supposed to do, and he bit down. But if Lenata's, who's not as big as Ryan, and Lomachenko, who for sure ain't as big as Ryan, if these guys are able to hurt you, Ryan for sure can hurt you. For sure, especially at 140. But again, the intriguing thing about a fight like this is you can't hurt what you can't hit. And you can't hit what you can't see. So Ryan is going to have to work on his accuracy because when he was fighting Tank, and again, each fight is his own, Tank is a different dynamic. Tank Davis is shorter than Devin Haney in stature. So the punches are maybe a downward angle, a different trajectory fighting a smaller guy, right? And that complicates things. Like look at Roley versus Pitbull Cruz. Pitbull Cruz is short at 35. So at 140, he's insanely short. 
but he's using it to his advantage because he's used to being short. See, a lot of people look at being short and I could talk boxing all day. A lot of people look at stuff like being short as almost like a handicap in boxing, but anything that is looked at as a liability, you can try your best and try to find a way to turn that into an asset if you utilize it the right way. It reminds me of the great Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger has this great speech where he was just basically talking about his early days before he had blew up, before Conan, before he had made one movie when he was just a bodybuilder. He's just hulking, huge bodybuilder. And I'll speed the story up for you. But basically, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, are you killing it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get to the chopper now. Arnold was this bodybuilder and he was this massive proportion in size. All the directors in Hollywood said, this ain't it. We used to guys like Robert Redford and Burt Reynolds and Dustin Hoffman at that space of time, let's say the 70s, early 80s or whatever. They're like, you this big behemoth, nobody wants to see that, right? And then he said, you're also Austrian, so you have this German accent. And Arnold was talking about how people said, hey, look at your last names, Schwarzenegger. Look at your accent. Look at your grotesque physique. Because again, bodybuilding wasn't back then wasn't as accepted or common as it is now. You know, people seen somebody that big back in the day, they might look at you down the street as you're walking by. So the point I'm making is Arnold in this speech talked about people clown his accent. They clown his last name. They said his body wouldn't work for a leading man in Hollywood. And then that's all the stuff we know Arnold Schwarzenegger, the actor for. I'll be back, you know, having these taglines and stuff like that. So he turned, he turned all of these things, Schwarzenegger. That's what would, when I was growing up, that's what the poster would say. It'd be like T2 Judgment Day, Schwarzenegger. And it would just have his last name. You know what I mean? So he flipped it and he turned all of these liabilities into assets. So that's what a shorter fighter can do. And that's my story regarding like a guy like Pitbull. He uses, he's used to fighting taller people. So he uses that to his advantage. So back to Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, it'll be very interesting because this will probably be the heaviest, strongest, most explosive guy with the best speed that I can recall Devin Haney fighting. So even if he's fighting perfectly, will there be any O-ish moments where Ryan clips him? That's the intrigue with this fight. As far as them going tit for tat and if Devin gets in a great boxing rhythm, then Ryan's chances, he's going to have to keep taking risks and, and big chances because he's not going to win that game from my perspective. His biggest chance is if he makes it an ugly, nasty fight a, a la Robert Guerrero versus Andre Berto, that type of fight. And he, the punches that hurt you the most are the punches that you do not see. Finally, Devin Haney, I told you I would get to what he had to say. Devin Haney seen this picture of Ryan Garcia. Ryan says, they are claiming I'm fat. I have no history of missing weight and I'm not planning to just be ready. Devin Haney says, and you guys seen that on the screen. Devin Haney says, stop using your hands to push the fat down is history of you changing the weight days before. So again, all weight. All lies on the weight for this fight. I think weight is going to be interesting for both fighters, for real, because I think they're both big, even though despite them just recently moving up to 140 pounds. Ego Weight Watchers, best in the business and it's not even close.